delusion is a good word, but that doesn't help you very much. That just labels a problem, a distortion. So what do we do? Well, we find somebody else, man or woman, that knows how to alleviate and maybe remove this pain and suffering situation. And when and if that was possible, if that wasn't possible, we'd be screwed. <laughs> to put it in other words, there'd be no way out. But what is this other way where pain and suffering is alleviated or ceases to exist is simply in your mind. And that means the mind must have something else going on besides this monkey mind drama field program that we constantly initiate night and day. And yes, that's true. But how to explain it to a person that stuck totally in the drama world? And the simplicity of the explanation is that in this mind, what we call mind, which controls everything that we say and do. In other words, the body's function is controlled by the mind. But this indication that there is something else in the mind that's not drama, emotional experience, how do you value that? First of all, how can you find it? and relate to it, and then how can you value it and use it skillfully in your daily activity? And so the simplicity of that answer is the mind has two natures, and the universe only has one nature, and we call it nature. But this other aspect of your, con of your consciousness is in harmony with the outer nature. And it's, that's a survival mode, especially when you don't have civilized situations. And uh, as you can see, the world today, call it civilized, is actually that one thing. And if you use the terminology mankind, you generally want to change that to mind, man, unkind. <laughs> and like that. Okay? And what I'm doing here is unraveling this situation of how do you get this other natural mind functioning with the drama mind? Well, you got to mention it. And you need a guy to do that that knows both natures of mind. It could be a man or a woman. That's it. And there's about maybe 35, 40,000 of us on the planet right now that know a trick. <laughs> You know, we know something. And we know that because we have this kind of karma that searched it out and found somebody else to do it and we practice it. It's kind of like men can be, are not intuitive, but they can become intuitive. And this intuitive state is your, is your, we say, absolute ultimate awareness of the natural mind. And there are many aspects of that, but basically there's intuitiveness. Women have the monopoly. <laughs> it's the best way to put it. And some use it wisely and some don't, and some don't even acknowledge they have it, but they're in charge of the birth process of the planet, and therefore they have it. But we can learn it, us guys. And it's very, very Especially in the civilized world, we really got to know a lot of stuff. And it's kind of like Google. And the women, as I said before, have the, the monopoly. <laughs> but if you were intuitive, you could do things that other human beings couldn't do. Uh -uh. Well, that might have a switch on it, change the plug of the bear. Still got okay, so for just a moment, just a moment, before we take that each and do it, why don't we just meditate? Not contemplate, you know, meditate. 
Now meditate simply means to bring your mind to one thing. No multitask. You don't have to eat and talk and move around at the same time. No. <laughs> you just sit still, just as you are. It's helpful to have the back straight. It's helpful to have the eyes open and just kind of soften your gaze to the energy program about a foot or two in front. That's helpful. It's helpful to keep the mouth closed to start with. And either on the knees or in the lap. And maybe your head slightly tilted forward. So it's balanced. And do what you're already doing. Bring, bring your awareness, your focus. Meditate if you want, on your breath. So how do you do that? Well, you imagine you're breathing. You're con now you're consciously breathing. And the breath is coming in. Your diaphragm is expanding, where it should be. And you're exhaling out your nose. If you can't exhale out, the mouth is okay. But inhale. Watch the air coming in, diaphragm expanding. Exhale. Watch the air go out your nose. Now we're going to contemplate. And to do that, you simply take your mind off your breath and let it rest in its natural state. And you do that by simply keeping yourself to the present moment. Gently bring your mind to the very present moment. No meditating. Now be mindful and bring yourself out here. Bring your awareness out here. From wherever it was, just kind of locate this room in the people. That's called awareness. Now everybody on the planet has awareness. Now we feel as we said before, spirit. And it's not something that is other than watching with your senses and your mind, yourself and what goes on around. And that's awareness. And that's called the drama mind. Everybody does that. And we all are integrated in the process of doing that. There is no such thing as separation. 
everybody in this room is totally interconnected to everybody else in the entire universe. That's the way the universe works. Every atom is interconnected and we're all made of atoms. And how can you attach a label to something that is made of an infinite amount of that? How can you say this is a body? For instance, how can you well, because you can think that. But does that make it true? Maybe it does and maybe it doesn't. And for some, it works both ways. <laughs> and a lot of us humans are gifted. You know, we're walking around, we're looking like ordinary everybody else's, but we can, we can do things other people can't do. And that gifted me. <laughs> I just used to shut off the light. No, I just <laughs> 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 okay, so back to this breathing thing. There isn't any kind of program of discipline to attain some goal, physically, mentally, emotionally, whatever, that does not involve breathing because without it, you're dead. And so, what, why do we start with that as a meditation object? It's because it's always with them. They can wake up in the middle of the night and meditate on the ground. I do that. And I throw another few tricks in there just to make it easy to go to the bathroom or whatever. But this same breath program is martial arts, all these different traditions, new age, a lot of age stuff, kind of thing. But what is it? What do we do with it? We consider ourselves energy feeders, okay? Either through our cell phone or our food. <laughs> right? Everybody's eating their cell phone. Mm. Screens, air, all of this. This is, we're feeding the energy. The sun giving us vitamin D in a nice camp and all that. So, this fact is these shamans of Tibet use the energy program that was already available at, at, at that, in that life-destroying situation. And in the process of the breath, they just identified that the air element, they call it prana. It has so much energy that, well, we know that if we take an atom and pull it, it creates a big boom. But this energy of the air has four elements in it that make it just extraordinary if you focus on it. And just by focusing on the air coming in, you do something to your meaty little brain that causes really nice secretions to go through your body. Okay? And that's why they call it fun. Okay. Now you don't have to identify those secretions and you don't have to identify what part of the brain and all that. No, what you need to do is simply put your brain picture on what the air element itself and know that it has earth in it because it's got dust. It's got water, moisture in it. It's warm, so it's got sun radiation in it. And it takes up space. Well, those five elements, earth, water, fire, you like that one? Fire. Air and space, this is a symbol in space. These five make everything. There isn't anything that exists that isn't composed of those five elements, including what I'm pointing to right here in front of my eye, which to a child would say nothing. <laughs> Looks like nothing. But right there in front of your no no nose is a big blob of air, and it has so much energy that it could probably make the earth disappear. You're going to breathe that? <laughs> yes, we're going to breathe, and we're going to breathe it with a special trick. And this trick will do, turn you into everything you need to do from that point on. It's kind of like if you want to be on the path 
you got to put a foot on the path. If you really want to bet on the path, you put the other foot on the path. Now you really on the path. You can even run your feet on. But this trick is the key. And all Tibetan lamas, men and women, law means honorable money, law, mom, do this and teach it initially. And it's the way all the transmission of the shamanistic tricks of Tibetan Buddhism are presented and even now projected to the left. Okay. This is this is their trick. And anybody can do it and anybody can teach it and apply it to any program or tradition on the planet. They, they do that. So there's no copyright. You, you got it. The trick is easy. Watch. We'll do it. We'll do it together. Then we'll take refuge. And this will get the ball really rolling. Breathe. Focus on the air that you're breathing, not the breath. It's right in front of your eyes. Now with your imagination, Color the air that's coming in your nose into your lungs white. So you're imagining the air as white light filling your lung, okay, this part of your body. The second part of this practice is to take the middle breath, that which takes the energy out of the air in your lungs and throws it through your body. Imagine that transfer as red light flashing everywhere in your body. This is the middle round. Then when you're ready to exhale, simply take those two, the source and the energy, as blue light out your nose to space. That's called the healing breath. In Hawaiian it was called the pa. Anyway, so this is white inhale, red absorption breath, blue exit. Do that. Now take your focus, take your mind, your awareness off of your three lights and off of your breathing if you're focusing on the breath. And bring that awareness into this room. And now we have a good basis taking that and we'll read this together and we're going to go through it once in Canadian commonly called English and once in Tibetan Sanskrit and it starts at the top of this sheet in order to attain enlightenment for ourselves and the limitless sentient beings, our mother. We now all together take refuge and offer prostration. 
We go for refuge to all glories, holy mom. We go for refuge to all the evidence where the deities gathered in our own power. We go for refuge to all Buddhas, those who conquered mind and gone beyond. We go for refuge to all this supreme dharma. We go for refuge to all those noble founders. And we go for refuge to all doctors and doctors who are the protectors and defenders of the Dharma. And all of these possessing the eye of transcending the word. To the Buddha, Dharma, and this supreme assembly, we go for refuge until our might. May I, to where I gain from practicing the six perfections, accomplish Buddha, they say, all thinking beings. Now I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to chant this to the spirit. Then we're going to read the refuge prayer, uh, second part there in the Sanskrit, which is how we communicate the spirit. When we do the refuge. Canada here last week and we had a, a group of people wanted to learn to meditate using the tar system. The tar. So we were at the place where I was staying with my friends. They said, why don't we do it here? So they 25, 30 people showed up in their apartment, not, not much bigger than this space. And they were there because they, I talked to them three years ago and they had seen me on the web. But they wanted a, a special empowerment. And then I happened to say, before we do this special meditation empowerment, is there anybody here who wants to take refuge? And then one girl asked me, she said, what are we taking refuge? <laughs> <laughs> Good question, girl. <laughs> your own mind. Your mind is your mind's teacher. Nothing out here can influence your mind as much as your own mind can. <laughs> And this girl sitting here with her mouth open. Yes, but you haven't told me why I'm taking that. I said, because in your mind, you have a place where there's no drama. And you can, and you go there when you meditate. You go there when you have a near-death experience. 
you go you go there when you're stricken in some way, physically or otherwise. You go there by the use of psychoactive drugs. You go there by extreme sexual or physical activity and so forth. There's all kinds of ways to running, you can get into the zone. Well, this zone is this same mind. And it's, it's kind of like the sleep state. It's there, but you don't, you're not activating. Which in sleep, you, you activate the dream. That's why you go to sleep. That's what the aborigines did to go into the dream state in their survival technique. But in any case, this, this space in your mind is what I am called by people in Germany. And they actually gave me a cup. And on this cup, it said, the no drama drama. <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was appropriate. <laughs> the no drama. Anyway, so it, I'm kind of pointing out, but you, you've all had the experience of it, you just didn't value it because the drama world is so fascinating and so distracting, you don't really appreciate it. But now you do because you know you have pain and suffering. Physical, mental, emotional states of suffering that you go into and come out of. So you got your happiness program, it just didn't stick. Well, this other nature of your mind is the sticky one. <laughs> but you have to appreciate it, kind of like the llama is, is, is the method person giving you this program of this other mind. He's the llama, he or she was pointing it out. But you have to function just the way you do a computer. Computer comes on, just blue screen. Then you program it, and what you want comes up on the screen. Mine's the same thing. That's how we made these computers. We, humans. But people don't want to discipline their mind, no. They like the drama. They like to be exact. They like the pain inside. They're into it. And they don't see any way out, though. They just accept it. But it's not. It only indicates something's wrong. That's the only usefulness of any kind of thing. Physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. There, that's a red flag. <laughs> the trigger. And it comes on inadvertently because you don't know that you've been around for a thousand billion trillion lifetime doing this stuff. You don't accept that. This one's hard enough. You don't want to hear that. Pass it. It's on anyway. But all of that activity, whatever you did past lives, and even though it doesn't help you this life to know that, what, it, what it was, it carried tendencies that are now coming up in this body in this life. And these tendencies are not apparent. They're subliminal. And what these tendencies are is everything you ever said thought or performed created those tendencies and good or bad you know helpful or harmful here they are <laughs> you see and they come up at the most inappropriate time you know a lot of people say you know i found myself in situations that i I would, I drove myself into those situations, but I would rather not have been in those situations. That's the problem. And they don't go away, you can't erase them. You can't help anybody else who's got these tendencies because they're their tendencies. Everything you think produces your world, not mine. That's why they call me the no job one. Is that an accomplishment? I don't know. Just the way I evolved. But there's no I. So back to this one. If you can rest in this other dimension of your consciousness, in this nothing space, if you can just rest, you have pushed the button of your intuitive 
awareness. Yep. That's the trigger. And the more you rest in this other no drama lama natural state, the more intuitive you become and the more knowledgeable and the more intelligent is a good word. And finally you come to a place where you just can relax 24-7. And, and only a Buddha human can do that. That Buddha had must have, he or she must have done a lot of good stuff in that life. But to get that to function 24 7, I cannot imagine. I don't think anybody can. How can he imagine something that's not there? It's really weird. In any case, that was the answer to the question of that girl says, why am I thinking? Because she wants to get to that place. And she's taking refuge in her own tendencies to get there. Not to get there, because there's no get there. (laughs) That means she wants to be the boss of the boss. And the boss of the boss is the person who takes their mind and uses it to train the mind. Okay, that's a pretty far out mind. Now you don't need the Lama, you only need the Lama's tricks, which is like that three lights meditation, that's a trick. And if you can't imagine, that doesn't matter because you attempted to, and one day the light bulb of your imagination is going to produce a code color, and you're going to want to know where that came from. It's kind of like your dream. Dreams get brighter and brighter for some. They want to know where the dreams come from. Well, the dreams come from your previous life. There's stuff in those dreams you never did this life. Okay? And then when you wake up, the dreams go poof, so they're not real. Well, then you wake up in this world, you think this world's real, and it's not real. Because everything you're thinking and sensing The moment you do that, it's in the past. If it's in the past, it's not present. If it's the present, it doesn't exist. Now debate that with Catholics, Hindus, Muslims, communists, American (laughs) politicians, CEOs, heads of the military, and Catholic priests. Debate that. They have no comeback whatsoever. End of discussion. And in that case, you will become absolutely free of their conditioning. Entirely free. You'll be outside the box. You'll be a hippie. <laughs> 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 and when I went to <laughs> school, when I went to Vancouver, it was all here. You, you kids haven't changed. So, in that group of 25, 30 people, 20, at least 20, took refuge. But they didn't snap. They came up, it was really weird. It was silence when I said, I'm going to take refuge in that girl. I answered the question. I said, okay, anybody want to come up? And I'm waiting with him with a red string. <laughs> and so this one girl comes up and she says, I want to take refuge. And she says, Get down on your right knee. <laughs> And I said, I read her the refuge prayer, and I said, you, are you happy to accept them? And she said, yeah. And I said, there's a Bodhisattva prayer that says you're going to be nice to everybody and yourself and the environment from now on. Do you, do you, do you accept them? And she, she said, I think so. I said, no, say yes. <laughs> she said, yes. Yeah. I said, okay, I'm going to give you a Tibetan name, but before I do that, I want you to know you have to live up to that name. 
translates from the Canadian. I'm going to give you both names. And this string I'm tying around your neck means you're going to be empowered. You're empowering yourself. That's the mantra you need to stop. And I says, see the scissors? I'm going to cut your hair. Because they said, no, I'm just going to cut a little bit. It signifies that you were cutting your ego fixation. That's all. Snip. I just take the hair. And I tried to put the string around and give him a bop on the head. As soon as that girl stood up, oh, I gave her a name, too. And I gave her what it meant. And so, yeah, Joy was writing his all down. As soon as that, that girl stood up, two more. Birthday card. They said, well, come on. And then they no longer, and then three, and then four, and pretty soon I was over an hour. And I'm sitting there buying cords, cutting in. <laughs> <Over the bar. laughs> but the point being is they were taking refuge in themselves. They weren't taking refuge in me. I mean, they are, that's a big mistake. Really. The Lama is the source. And for that reason, the Lama is the refuge. But the real deal is your own mind. Your heart is what you want to bring up. 24-7. This is the ultimate refuge and this is the ultimate remedy to whatever ails you. If you're loving and kind to yourself, no problem. If you're loving and kind to everybody else, Obvious result. If you're loving and kind of environment, it supports you. If you don't, it will kill you. And it is killing us humans on this planet because we're not nice to the environment. And the spirits don't like that. And the spirits control the weather, like it or not. And you can communicate to these girls and guys called spirits. And that's what we're doing. We're telling them that we're interested in their well-being and the planet's well-being. And would you please stop wrecking everything? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you don't know it, but New Orleans is underwater. You see like that? Impermanent. So now we're going to think about that. We have this special human existence. Very favorable, we live here on fly. What are we going to do with it? We don't know the next breath or the next life. We don't know which one comes through. We're very impertinent. And I, I watched a movie last night. The professor it was all about, yeah, impertinent. But this impermanence back here is so important to, to your practice of meditation because you are a person and you don't know next breath or next life. First, which one first? Mm -hmm. and, and knowing that or thinking that only causes you to be maybe a little more in the practice of meditation. That's all. The karmic thing of all propensities coming forth, well, that's hard to deal with, but we deal with it. But this drama field is so distracting, we call it samsara, which means the place of emotional conflict. That's our world. That's what samsara means. And then the alternative that they call peace, well, that's what body religion wants you to take you to peace. But peace is only an antidote to the emotional affliction. It doesn't deal with the cause or the effect of those emotional affliction. So when we do what we want to do is we want to come to this peace state, relax. That's why people come to quiet, these beautiful islands. So you, you want to level the playing field in yourself. And by doing that, then it starts to gravitate out. That's just the way everything works. So to do that, well, first of all, is there any questions? Yeah. yeah. 
I think Super and I have a truth has more information about to me. It feels like everything is actually so permanent. Like, no matter if you're in this realm or you you are in the next realm. Oh, oh that's true. To me, I'm just like we're trapped in these emotional, psychological, illusionary no, that's obstacles with the spirit. Wait, no, that's even, not like through death, they're still living out the same issues. Some are the same issues they had in the physical body. Well, they are because their minds are just the universe, but that, that has never been in If you say impermanent, there's no end in sight because there's no end to the universe. And these critters, us, critters, mm -hmm. humans, animals, and spirits, we migrate throughout this universe. We inhabit planets everywhere in the universe, the animals and humans. And the spirits are everywhere in the universe, including in your body. They're the cause of some of our things. But more importantly, they have the benefit to give you the remedy of whatever you individually suffer. And that's been going on for thousands and thousands of years. This is not a new type program. To answer your question, this emotional crap does not have to exist. That's the whole point of survival. You don't have to be emotionally conscious. You can just stop doing that. But that's a big <laughs> And now I have to say good luck with it. That's my name, Tachi. Good luck with it. And good luck with all of us with that. We're all in this suit together. And we're at the top of the food chain. So we should use that to some advantage per person and structure our lives. That, that's exactly why I went to Canada, because I needed a break. Abby needs a break. And I need a break. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even when you meditate, you got to take a break. <laughs> <laughs> the only, only ultimate break is when you can rest in voidness. When you can be your own no drama lump. That's the ultimate break. Because in that position of your mind is called the great view of nothing. You can do that. It's free. It's free. It's the same freedom. <laughs> it's free and it doesn't cost anything, but it's also free because you're free. And what are you free of? The drama. Uh, the idea of who you are. You that. It's driving you crazy. We got my water right down the street, you know. You don't want to be crazy. You don't want to be extremely smart either, because that's what the comic You know, I'm so glad that I do not have a photograph of that. I'm so glad. <laughs> that I can forget what happened yesterday. You know one thing we do? We forget our name. <laughs> they give you this Tibetan name, and after a while you can't remember your whatever name. And then to make it worse, you smoke dope or something again, you can't even remember this morning. What you mean? That's not intelligent. <laughs> It's just a state of ignorance. I don't know, it's stupid. That's why they call it stone or the rock. <laughs> so no, we're not going to the state of peace and just stay there. That's all the practices of whatever I could do in my whole life in the Navy. That's where the American Indians started to turn me around. That's where the stu stupids started to turn me around. That's where the Hindus started to turn me around. Oh, I didn't mention the Catholics I grew up with. Okay, and then, because they're pretty weird. And so forth, right down to this age of being out here in the island in the farm, and before that, Maui, and before that, Honolulu. But this 
Maui experience in 1977 will not go away. You know, it's like if you get shot, the bullet only doesn't go away. <laughs> and so from 1977 to now, I got this idea in my head. And then along the way, there's other seed thoughts placed there by various intelligent people that won't go away. And so I've kind of collected these, and now we're down to the present day where the world is facing extinction of us, animals and humans. On this island, 90% of it. On the planet, 60%. Gone. Okay, so what is that telling you that this impermanence factor is yes, you should keep it in mind, but don't get weird about it. Don't fix it. As much as you can, try to do something about it starting with you and see if what results you get. So here's how we're going to do this. The first thing is you want your body to be healthy. So we're going to do the five elements meditation, and the way this practice is presented and the way you do it is the same no matter which element you use. So I'm going to pick fire, and this is the symbol we're going to use, a medical. It's a four-sided pyramid with a date. And the fire element is simply the warmth of your body, the air, the sun, etc. Any kind of radiation. Okay. And when you meditate on this symbol and, and label it that, give it that name, it psychically activates that to become a reality. So what am I saying is that what you imagine and, and what is real are very, very close together. And for instance, you imagine coming to Kauai, and here you are Kauai. If you want to go to Kapal, you got to imagine Kapal, and then you go there. And that's how your imagination is already working. You just don't make pictures of it. You let these screens do it, which is kind of the thing. So sit with your back straight, and breathe. And we're going to do the three lights meditation, um, the way we did it. And we're going to add three sounds to it. And you have to focus or meditate for this to work. But that's where you practice until you get it. Inhale white light into your lung. Visualize that. Hear the sound home. The energy breath through the body visualizes red flashes of light through every cell in your body. Hear the sound of. Oh. Exhaling out the nose is a combination of these two as a powerful healing breath, the space. Hear the sound, well that's blue light, hear the sound, home. Now, home simply means infinite potential to heal or the effect of healing. Again, inhale white light through your lungs, home. Red light energy through the body, hear the sound, home. These three together out the nose is blue light to space, the healing breath, home. Now, once you've settled into a state of peace and tranquility, just being calm, take your focus, your mind, your visualization off of the breath 
and collect the three lights and the three sounds with your imagination and funnel them into your heart shock, which is a place inside the body in the chest. And if you take your middle finger, which is the fire finger, and touch the area between your nipples, your breast, that bone, that's where it is visualized in there. And you want to visualize it as simply a spark, a remnant of the three lights and three sounds that you were just imagining. White, red, and blue, on, on, and on. All that is in that atom like spark in the center of your chest, like an atom. Now, as you relax at that point, as you focus there, like before, when you were breathing, just be present. That means you don't need to go to the future. You don't need to go to the past. You just want to be right here. And you will be in the space of your mind. No circumference. And literally, no dawn. Now, once you've got enough of that dimension of your mind, then simply imagine that little point to grow to the size of your fingernail and create a small, clear light sphere of energy. And it is the nature of our universe, our world. Then grow that with your imagination, expand it, and as it slowly expands, it turns into this four-sided pyramid of light in the heart center, right in the middle of your chest, right in the middle of your body, which is where most of the warmth originates anyway through breathing. See that red pyramid with your imagination and label it fire, any form of fire, radiation, like the sun. Then visualize that pyramid to move out in front of your body and up before your eyes, about arm's length in front. See this red symbol to grow in size, visualize it so large that you can see your form just as you are sitting inside, like a big tent. And you are receiving into your physical the energy of that which you are programming in your mind. Now we're going to share it because everything is integrated with this island that we live on. We're going to visualize the island of Kauai, and for anybody else, the area or town where they live, to be enclosed with this pyramid of red light. Then 
Then with your imagination and your focus working together, expand it to include Mother Earth, including her atmosphere, all of that inside this symbol. The next step is to expand it in size to completely enclose our solar system, sun and all the planets. Expand it in size to completely enclose our spiral disc-shaped galaxy. And go beyond the confines of your conceptual mind by merging it with boundless space. At this point, no meditation. Simply contemplate space. And this is the nature of your mind. Now move from that dimension with your imagination and again form the Symbol of fire enclosing the galaxy. Shrink it in size to just enclose the solar system. Smaller just to enclose Mother Earth. Then the island, city, town, or area where you live. And very much smaller to just enclose your body. And when you visualize your form inside this symbol of fire, you are bringing all the life force of the entire universe into your situation. And you can think that this healing energy program is healing you physically, hopefully mentally, emotionally, which is most important, and in harmony with everyone else, which we call spiritual. Then finish the practice by bringing that pyramid to back in front of your eyes to its original small size, nor to chest level it into your heart center. Shrink it in size so it forms a small sphere of clear light energy. And shrink it till it once again becomes nothing but a particle blending with the totality of light throughout space. Relax, no meditation. Then you bring your awareness to in front of your eyes and into this room, and we'll take a break. Well, I told you we've got to take a break.
Say again. Spirit. It's a sentient being, which means it has a mind. It thinks. It has an emotional program. It has a form or not. Comes, comes to a form. And they exist in everything. And they're all one human and they will be able. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. I was wondering if they had consciousness. The ones we're the ones we're kind of comfortable with are the, our, our ancestors or our family members who have passed on. They have consciousness, don't they? Yeah, they're sentient. Yeah. Oh, totally. But a spirit like the human is programming his existence or her existence. And it's not really based on the interaction of other sentient beings, but there is a drama program going on. But what is unusual about the spirits is they can see into our world what only a few of us can see is their world. <laughs> and that's the same for animals. Animals can see into our world, but we don't see very much of the animals. Kind of superficial. And there, they were, all of those spirits were once your lover. Um, Relative, friend, acquaintance, business partner, enemy, many times over. The yeah. other spirits that are the spirits are not necessarily associated with particular beings. One class of them is right now, yeah, the one that controls the world, which is what we are working with to keep hurricanes out of here. So that's what the lions do. But the lion kahunas have all died out. And what's left over is not very workable, practical. And what the Dalai Lama said to the Hawaiian Peak Nation was keep what is workable under this present situation we find yourself in and discard anything that's harmful or intense harm to others or to the environment. Discard them. That's all he told me. So they, they're working. <laughs> but the spirit world is very important to us because we don't want hurricanes to come. So since 1992 to now, we have not had any hurricanes. And for those that are really religious, they use it, God, and all that. But this aspect of the consciousness that are related to everything is in, totally in sync with the spirit world. In shamans, men or women, can do things with that. And they do. And some of them are quite harmful, and some of them are destructive. But our only influence is to alleviate pain and suffering. Not only for us, but for them. So when we interact with these sentient beings, who are once our lovers, lovers don't want, we want to be nice to them. So we offer them gifts. And we don't offer human sacrifice or animal sacrifice. That doesn't it works, but it's very, very bad. For <laughs> Nobody likes it. So you offer substitute. And what spirits the ones that we're working for with, with this weather program is the ones that feed on odors. They're called kratons. Mm -hmm. Kratons. Kratons. Yeah. Um, Kratons means hungry, hungry ghosts. Ghost. Yeah, hungry spirit. But it means more than that. It means a completely deprived spirit. It's not just about what they want to eat or drink. It's deprived on all levels. And a lot of our human beings on this planet already suffer from that, called poverty. 
Okay, so you can think of that kind of spirit as totally poverty stricken. Can never find the substance for me. And part of their program is about it. Okay. They also function with what we call the spirits of the earth, not okay, which are the water control. They control the energy. And their demigods fight. Well, they actually fight and quarrel among themselves. Okay, so that disgusting situation kind of reaches into our world. Yeah. So, like, if someone is First of all, you think that there's nice spirits that might be helpful. Ooh, ooh, very dangerous. Very dangerous. So let's go to the other kind. Now, the other kind, which are dangerous and cause dis ease on all levels in our world, you want to be nice to them, you want to, you want to gift. Yeah. You want to propitiate them. I try that approach. Yeah, no, you gotta do it. The more you give them more people, more individuals. Yeah, that's on the, the that's right. So well, you want to draw whatever you give them. You have to have the power to make sure that they are tamed just like you were in the dog. You want those spirits tamed. I'm on this planet, on this planet, to tame myself and maybe a few others. That's the only reason I took this. I'm not karmically bound. Okay. This breath, next life, I mean, I But keeping that idea in mind, it has to apply to the spirits and animals too. And so, don't think there's one out there that's going to be kind of because they all exactly like And they might go, yeah, well, I know. Run. Well, it seems like the ones with the land, if you work on the land, then you have the land spirits. Eh? 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 They're there first. They've been there for a thousand of years, and here you come along and check all over the place. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, in my observation, I see I I'm really kind of helping people that are helping. Yeah, you're helping the people. Yeah. But they got to help themselves. Yeah, but you you got to be careful with these spirits because they cause sickness and disease. You know, mm -hmm. and you know you got that problem when you start getting all itchy or you got a rash or you start to stink or some other malfunction. You know you got spirit influence. You go to these doctors, they don't have a clue. Oh, take antibiotics, which will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be aware. Now, there's three things that function that have to be in place. And it's the same three things that a mother interacts with the child. Okay, so you think those spirits as your children. First of all, you gotta have compassion for them because they are suffering thousands of times more than you are. You must know that. And there are no good guys or girls in the school because of that. Okay, just picture yourself suffering 1,000 times more than you are on all of it. Mm. Now that's really genius. Number two, the compassion, kindness. You want to do things that show that you're those things. The next thing is you must have insight into the nature 
of nature itself. You have to be really intuitive. Okay, and this intuition has to be telling you what's appropriate and what's not. Women have it, you gotta bring it up. Okay, so that's called insight. Number three, you need power. You gotta be, this isn't, oh, would you please fix my new toilet? Would you please let my apple tree give me an apple? You see, the uh uh. You command. Well, based on your insight and your compassion, you tell them you will do this. Mamas do it with their children. We're this word loving. But we're honorable about it. We expect nothing back other than they just like that. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and if they do somehow make it easier for you to be there, that, that's a perk. Very good. Very, very good. The Hawaiians used to do it, they lost. They died. Their tradition never carried. Why did they die? Everything's important. This stuff I'm teaching is very important. It arises, it's been around for 50 or 100 years, and it's gone. And it doesn't come up on all kinds. No, you're you're here to do that. You're here to help them. You get accepted, make things better for them. Keep that. And get your compassion, power, and insight working. With your ability to use your imagination on what's appropriate while you focus. And they respect that. That's your power. So the better you get at these tricks like the three lights in the old law home and then you're going to the deity over. These deities are the, the power of action. That's, they're the activity of the power. You don't have to do anything. You can get out of the way. And watch things get better. It's a lazy girl way out. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of practice. Not that much. Uh, you know, just a lifetime. Hour two day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's a good day. Yeah, two or four lifetimes. Well, yeah. everyone in this okay. room has probably oh, been doing it for lifetimes. I got forever. I've got to go with it. In fact, I already visualized myself. It's all in the book, right? Yeah, it's right there. <laughs> but, but this, I visualize myself just walking out of this body and keep on walking. Do that. How about staying? Just keep on staying. You know, the body's going to go, poof. You have a cold feeling. You're going to go, ah, from three of that now. <laughs> you're the universe, the galaxy. Yeah. Tashi, if I may ask a question that's a follow on to Anne's question, and um, sorry, I don't know your name, but. Um, yeah, so the, we're, the we're on the Amber. spirit theme tonight. So this is, <laughs> I've been getting this from all over. So, on the spirit theme, is there um, <laughs> an aspect of, uh, I know we're talking the relative scale here, is there an aspect of yourself that is spirit now? Yeah, it's, but it's in depth. We're going to do that next, in fact. I couldn't do what you said. He said, ask me if I have a spiritual aspect that's here right now, now, as we're talking. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. That's what I'll show me. Okay. Now I don't have my work in. But I'll show me. Your shirt looks like you do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty flashy. Yeah, it's pretty flashy. You can wear this in there. This, this is an Aloha shirt. You know what it reminds me of? Eucalyptus. Rainbow. Oh, yeah. Rainbow, Rainbow eucalyptus. eucalyptus. So I got my bark. <laughs> but that, that, yeah. The whole program. This, this is interconnectedness to the map. And it's operating relatively on and to, which is an ultimate, ultimate level, which is universal, simultaneous. We're vibrating. 
and, and this vibration is limitless. That's the spirit. Okay. It's the vibration. The vibration. The yeah. Of the patterning. The patterning is the form, the body where the vibration is activated. But the vibration of that patterning is the power, is the energy flow outward. All I can say is outward. To whoever and whatever. Okay. You don't direct it. It's like the sun doesn't direct its energy. It just burns in place. <laughs> Yeah, so yes, but there's one more dimension. They're like string theory. Yeah, but there's one more dimension. And it's the mind itself is the activator of those two things that we just spoke about. Okay, the energy of the form and the energy of the spirit of the form. But the mind itself, have a seat. Would you like a chair over here? Huh? But the energy of the mind, and this is your natural mind, you know, this other place in your mind is already existing. This is what it truly is. It's called the Dharma Kaya. Kaya means vehicle, Dharma means wisdom. That means wisdom of it. But Dharma Kaya is the natural state of your mind just as it is. It's all pervasive. Did I get it? Did you get it? It is not limited. The mind has no center, no circumference. It's not limited. It is the universe. But it isn't the universe the way we mindfully think. But it still has that all-pervasive capacity. You can think of anything and you can do almost anything if you want. Mind controls the body and what you say. That's part of its universal. That's called the Dharma Kaya. That's its wisdom nature. But we distort it because we limit. We don't entertain that. We don't say that's practical. We don't say it's worth anything. Because it doesn't exist in this reality. But at the same time, it's right in front of your nose. And if you go around and say your mind is nothing but what's in front of your nose, people lose it. You know, it, it's insulting. You're nothing. Like guys is saying, you know. Get this, get this in your head. So that's called the offer basis. That's what we're working with, with these functions and methods. But the spirit is an invention of that to tame the ornery situation, the mind that wants to be other than nice and kind and considerate. That's the spirit. That's what the spirit is for. And it's an invention of the mind. You have to imagine it. And you have to give it qualities, qualities you may or may not have. If you give it qualities, like your mother has great qualities, you might have thrown it in the dumpster, but she gave you. So your mind is the Dharmakaya. That's the invention of the spirit. Now there's two levels of this. One we're going to do right now is called the Google level. This is Manjushri. It's the practice. It's how to know everything. It's how to be intuitive with these weirdo spirits. Okay. This, this is the power. This is the activity of your all-pervasive nature. Your all-pervasive nature is just that. But you want to get it into action, so you invent this spirit, which has been, this system is not new. This is not new age. This has been around thousands, thousands of years on this point. But this, that all pervasive one and the, and the invented one, we call the deity, or we say rainbow bodied inventions, projections, is what you bringing into your physical body. And, and that one is apparent to spirit. That your physical body kind of loses reference. And so the spirits are now, huh? He said, uh, get lost. Okay? You got their attention. But you got it in a powerful format. And they're okay with that as long as you be nice to them. 
And so every day, the first thing I do, I get up and make coffee. I the first shot of the coffee goes on the shrine to the spirit and a little cookie cracker bread or something, dish right alongside of it. Like, and then I feed the cat. Okay. <laughs> And then I make Abby's coffee, so I've got all the bases covered. <laughs> this is what you got to do. Animal to the spirits. You got to use the cat. Take care of the lady. Go after the spirit. Spirits work. Give them something. Because you owe them. <laughs> you got to be. Yeah, you owe them. Yeah, you do. When they're debtors, workers, we owe them. Big time. Yeah. <coughs> and when we walk into the next life, they're going to be there and they're going to be there. Infinite what you can't see now, oh, your telescope, as far out as it can see, cannot see that world. As small as you want to make it with the electron microscope, everything disappears. In between, <laughs> And you got to gift them, you know, we owe them. They're, we're debt, they're debt. So now we're going to do the Manjushri. Oh yeah, I put a picture of it there. And there's a, yeah, the, uh, I'll talk about it too. It's hard to see. And this is a mala, this is how you count mantra, but you don't need that, unless you really want to get tall. <laughs> and this is Manjushri. This is an invention. Okay, if you can imagine, you're this two armed god. You know, God with his flesh around, he dressed in silk and jewels. But he's got this sword, blazing sword, raised in the sky, and this symbolizes cutting your egocentric self, I, me, mine, affliction. And it is the cause of all sorts. We're going to cut that and start with. That's what we do in three lines here. In his left hand, he has this stem of a lotus. A lotus symbolizes the human condition like a beautiful flower. Lotus. And on the lotus is the text of the female that invented the way they do it in China. Taoism. We have thousands of years ago. Prajnapara means part Yeah. Now that text is a sutra, but I can take everything that it says, thousands, thousands of words, and I can give it to you in one line. Form is emptiness, emptiness is form. And apply that to everything. Because that's the way it really is. And in this text, it actually has another text, there's 100,000 ways to say that. And this book, we chanted that. 12 hours a day for five days. This book. Okay. And now I want to tell you, it's the driest five or six days. Ago. <laughs> In fact, I had none on this side and none on this side. Kept poking at you. You're on line six, play 12, <laughs> give it a program. <laughs> five days of chanting, what's in this book? <laughs> Called the Great America. All along. <laughs> is that in Sanskrit you do that or Canadian? It, no, it's in Canada. It's, it's, in Canada. Canada. it's, Canada. it's, Canada. it's Canada. Sanskrit, just like we're all. The only okay. way you can communicate with the spirit really is with Sanskrit. It's not in Tibetan? That is in Tibetan. Oh, okay, so you're calling Tibetan Sanskrit? It's in Tibetan and Canadian. Which we call okay. Canadian. Yeah. Not all of There's some empire that there's no, there's no translation. Okay, so what did that accomplish? Well, here's this $21 million building, which a woman gave so long as a money. $21 million. Pretty nice building. But anyway, when we do this practice, we want to think of this as the potential that you have with your all pervasive mind. That whatever you think can appear. You want to, you want to, you want to own it. Okay. So we're going to do this. Now, to do this, we have 30 minutes. That's more than usual. <laughs> Sit with your back straight. Sit 
So now we're going to move from this use of the five elements to make us healthy to this practice, which brings compassion, power, and insight into the of this health. And when you do this, it's simply a rainbow idea. It's a hologram, which means you're releasing this body, let it fade, and put this one in its place. Why this one? Because it's a cloak. And when you do it, circle yourself with light, not only around your head, but around your body. Visualize a sphere out to the tip of your finger. With pure energy, doing whatever. You got that? Okay, here we go. There went to space. I'm looking for one more time. I heard it. And this sound, D, looks like the letter U placed on its side with a hook. D, D H I and the D I. D. Now, if you want to learn to draw this, you imagine it in red light and a white background. I drew it on black. Okay, D. That is the Tibetan or Sanskrit word for light. For what? Light. 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 Any kind of light. Inside lights, outside. So when we say light, like with that last practice, we have the lights inside and outside. And we want to bring these lights because these symbols do things just like the computer. And this side does some things. To heal you. So now we want to go to that ultimate level. Back straight, eyes in front, mouth closed to start with, and breathe. When you breathe, bring the three lights, white light into the lungs here only. Red light through the body is energy off. Both together out the nose, blue light to space. Boom. H U N G. Now take your focus off the three lights, bring them into the heart center. And then see the llama in front. So you're in your ordinary body, you've got this energy program through the heart chakra because it all is going to start and end in the heart chakra, not the head. You get there with the head. Then in front of you is a llama, but the llama is in this format. Manjushri, which is the practice in Tibetan Buddhism of how to know things without having been told, called intuition. It is the Google of all shamanistic practice. I'm sitting in front of you as this form. So you're either imagining. And I'm really cute. <laughs> Young, healthy, <laughs> yeah, I'm really cute. Young, healthy, <laughs> smiling. I got three eyes. Okay. I have one right here. Imagination. But I don't exist. I'm simply a rainbow energy program like the illusory body projected like you would see in a movie theater. In front of my forehead, white light is entering into your forehead to strengthen your idea of this being useful to you. That this is a workable projection. The second is you'll visualize red light in the Manjushri's throat, me sitting in front of you, to your throat to strengthen the patterning of your speech. Make it more appropriate and positive. And the third energy transfer is from the llama's heart in front to your heart, 
of the wisdom and the knowledge of how to use that wisdom appropriately for others in the environment. Now, when you can see those three lights coming simultaneously, Manjushri, the Lama, <coughs> blends into you, disappears into your fabricated body and has this symbol. At that point, the three lights are now in your three places. So you visualize the white light in the white sphere home in the head. The red light in a red sphere with an awe ah in it in the throat. And a blue sphere of energy in the heart chakra with the home, dark blue home in the body. Then you intentionally bring the head sphere, white one, down into the throat sphere. And then those two together blend into the home in the heart center. And in this way, your body, your speech, and your mind are in the same place, which is very rare. The home changes into this D, red. So the blue home is now overlaid with this red D. The D is the activating symbol of this being applied universally. So it's called the creation sound of this fact. Sound the D. Visualize it in your heart in red. And sound it with your speech. Focus there. Inhale. D. That was the personal function. Now we want to bring in the we program. And so from this D, visualized as having a five colored sphere of light around it, is emanating out through your rainbow body to everybody you have karma with. All the animals, spirits, and humans. Everywhere. Again, focus on the D and sound. Now we do the practice. That was the empowerment. It was called the setup. Visualizing yourself as Manjushri in 3D with all of the ornaments of the five wisdoms on the head and the six kinds of disciplines of the jewelry and the five colors of silks of the elements, all that. Visualize your mother directly in front as this same symbol facing life sign. Then project this healing symbol to you, father, friends, relatives, and lovers, everybody, enemies, everybody you have karma with this life, and especially in the present mode. Then project it to all the humans on the planet until there's eight billion in count. Then project it to all the animals in the ocean and on the land. Into that number. So in your mind, you're filling up space with this symbol of the Manjushri. Then include the entire spirit world, which is from the center of the earth to the farthest reaches of space. Your mind now. <coughs> Filled with this symbology causes a vibratory sound to originate in your heart center, and that's called the mantra. 
or in this case, the heart mantra, because by you visualizing all the various kinds of critters being manjusi, it vibrates in your heart with that kind of interconnectedness. Understand. Love. Universally applied. Love. And the mantra goes like this. Om, ah, la, ta, sa, na, ji, so Om, ah, la, ta, sa, na, ji, so ha. Om, ah, la, ta, sa, na, ji, so ha. Om Three things to keep in mind. So this is not just one point in this picture that you are presenting, you are projecting. Any place that you can see, anybody or anything in this imagination process is the practice. So if it's just one jewel ornament or one bird in the background, or whatever you can see, or your body is just the deity. But that D sound is functioning to do something to your body. And also the patterning that it's creating in the body is escalating outward to others. Okay, so the D is part of the visualization. You being this symbol of Manjushri is the form of it, and everybody else, of course. And the mantra, that vibratory sound, because you are inventing limitless sending beings into your session by imagining them as Manjushri, that sound of ultimate compassion, Omar Pasanadi Soha, is the activity. And it blasts energy patterns through your body and out around you, everybody and everything. And so does the D, and so does you as this symbol, this holographic symbol. So you're working with those three, and you're just kind of moving your mind's focus around in this movie of infinite potential. Oh,
So, what do you do with it? Well, you take it home. Remember the tea, remember that manjushri kind of looks funny. Remember the mantra is caused by you projecting manjushri to your mother and all mother beings. And you practice that. 111,000 times is appropriate. And if you have a mala, you can keep track. Each round is 100. You only, you only have to say this 110 times. 100,000. Omar Patanadi Soma. What is that? What are those nine sounds? They're the code into the mind that already knows everything. It is the Google asset aspect. So like on your phone, you buy this app. This is the app into your wisdom nature so that you understand how not only to use that nature, but how to apply it. And how, and how does it function? You've got to be able to explain this to kids. Because they do these practices too. So, all Marapata Nadi Sola is the main thing of the Google code. But we have another code. It's the same mantra, less the last three letters. So, it's a little bit easier. So, you, we're going to say this, and then I'm going to give you the link. Everybody's manjushri, you're manjushri. The D's in your heart center, the mantra is there because you did this. It goes like this. Om Aratasa Nadi, Om Aratasa Nadi, Om Aratasa Nadi, Om Aratasa Nadi, Om now, how do you code this? How do you enter? The D is on a sword standing upright with a Vajra handle. It has, this is the Vidal, it's five awareness and symbol. So this sword, long way like this, this is the handle. And on that sword is this sound, D, okay? Now this is right up the central channel of your life force, which you know runs through your body. And there it is, D, in the heart center. And it is connected to the mantra sounds as six swords, each pointing, they're flat, and they're pointing in, the, in six directions, outward. Okay? Now, all these swords are blazing, just like the one the D is using, so that's the light of your mind. And they have the mantra on each of their blades. So Om Ha Ra Ha Sa Na. Written. Then those swords are connected at the handle points with the upright one with the D sticking right into the middle of it. And they're flashing energy through your body and out to space to the six worlds animal, human, and the four of the spirit. Okay. That's it. You just say the mantra and think that. And get out of the way. There's no I, me, mine in this program. Om Arapata Nadi. Om Arapata Nadi. Om Arapata Nadi. Om 
just simply means it's all going everywhere and everybody gets it. It's always expanding. Always available. That's so hot. The D, as I said before, is the light energy of your mind focused like a like a laser, like a magnifying glass. Then those six stores which you activated to the sixth realm. All of those beings as Manjushri now come into you. So how do you visualize something as infinite like that? Think of the rain going into the lake or the ocean. So here you are, this center symbol, symbol of a Bodhisattva Manjushri. This is your bliss energy program. Then all those beings who are equal to you are coming into you from every direction. All of the spirits, all of the animals and humans on all the planets that they inhabit, as Manjushri into you. Then you focus on your central figure, symbol of Manjushri, and you disappear all of it into the mantra in your heart. The Om Ara Kanta Namaste. So all of that. Then all of that mantra sound of power, compassion, and insight disappear into the D. Then the D visualizes it to disappear into space. So whatever color background you have for the D is what it's disappearing into. If you have black on white, it all becomes a white. If it's the D white on red, then everything becomes a red. And the moment that takes place in your heart center, Do nothing. No meditation. And just be present by pondering space. It has no center, it has no boundary for comfort. Space. Now, space by itself is kind of dry. There's no earth, water, fire, air, but there is, but you just, they don't function. So what we want to do is light up space. And here's how you do it with Manjushri. The mantra, Om Arapasana D comes from the D. All patterning appears in light energy. So we're going to just focus on the D 
in our heart centers. And if you want, you can have a five colored sphere of light around it to contain it. It'll be about the size of your thumbnail. It's going to be either white or red, your choice, with a background of white or red. You're going to focus on it and sound it with your voice. Nothing else. No, no more programming. Than that. Inhale. Focus on the D and sound it with your voice. D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D like a supernova going off in your heart, and that energy of pure light flashing through you to the totality of space, like a huge supernova taking out jillions of gallons. <laughs> Now bring your awareness to in front of your eyes and into the room. If you want to use this practice in your ordinary life post meditation, you again become Manjushri through arms. And all sound in the drama world becomes Omar about medicine. Or dee 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 dee. Or blah 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 blah. <laughs> The Dalai Lama said to the Senate of the United States, this was his blessing to him. The fifth day he was there. Your mind creates your world. He said that. It was a four line thing. And so one of the senators. He says there was more to what you said in Tibetan than that. What's the rest of it? And he gets this big grin on his face. Well, if your thoughts produce your world, then you must be responsible for the happiness of the beings in the world and responsible for the removal of their suffering. And bring them all to maturity. Isn't that what our mothers wanted of us? They didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> but the seed was planted. Yeah. We'll keep those coming. 
Now we're going to end the practice tonight. And since you did that DDD, that's the finish of that practice. You don't have to do any dissolving into your image. Boy, you kind of that. The D function does it. Did it? Did you get a white out or something? I mean, hard to think with all that going on. <laughs> Not that is useful. Okay, on your sheet, this is the end of the class. At the bottom is a dedication prayer from both Tibetan and Canadian. I was still on that Yeah, you yeah. Okay, so we'll do the Tibetan one. By this virtue of having realized modern religion, yeah, we pre establish all beings without a single exception in this state. To the blessings of the Buddhas who obtain the three bodies, the blessing of the unchanging truth of this Dharma, and by the blessing of the unwavering aspirations of us, the Sun, may this dedication prayer be fulfilled. And I might add, may all the longings have long life, good health, happiness, and prosperity. And they all their wishes, especially the God of the Dharma without Dharma, the Dharma and the Dharma. No Dharma Lama, I got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, Dharma, Lama. Let's see, what else? Oh. May all beings have happiness and the cause of happiness. May all beings be away from suffering and the cause of suffering. May all beings bliss established in the bliss energy program of their own mind. And may all beings attain equanimity, equality, evenness of mind, and be kind and considerate. Om Ahu. Om Ahu. Om Ahu. Right back to the back. Thank you very much.